So my name is Bruce, Bruce Wright. Steve Early. And uh, from what I understand, you're doing a lot around uh, just the importance of unions and, and where unions are at right now. Because there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know the word backlash, but uh, pushback. Especially from some of us in more rad radical circles that unions are no longer really representing the people, but they're more you know, representing the bosses, if you will, or the bosses uh, are giving the, the union bosses uh, sweet deals and, you know, uh, they're in bed with the Democrats, it, is it, maybe we need to configure something different than unions. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, very ecumenical. Uh, I think uh, there's certainly uh, the continuing role for what I would call union democracy and reform struggles within mainstream unions. Uh, and some impressive examples recently of uh, teachers forming dissident acquisition caucuses in big city locals, the American Federation of Teachers, and statewide organizations of the National Education Association, uh, challenging incumbent leaders who have become a little bit out of touch with the rank and file, and uh, basically arguing that both of these unions have to be much more effective in defending off the corporate right, so-called yes. education reform movement. I think that's a positive development. I think it would be hard for teachers to organize a third union to get the teachers to switch you know, with a better political line or a similar agenda. So I think that's why most people have chosen, with all the limitations and constraints of the strategy, to kind of work within their existing organizations. The real test will be, after some of these reformers get in, do they really use the resources of the union to mobilize the rank and file, deal with school boards and mayors more effectively, as the Chicago teachers have done in recent years, after similar successful reforms still in the union. Um, or, you know, under the pressures of the same sort of employer attacks, do they become more like the people they replaced, in which case they may have to be replaced. But, um, you know, I think certainly in the 1970s, a lot of that rank and file struggle went on in industrial unions, and of course, the most prominent was the teachers. Do you see that there's a possibility of resurgence in what I would like to call activist unions or you know, a, a more militant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was here passed away, but he was a union organizer in Massachusetts with the Carpenters Union. My grandfather was also a union organizer and actually campaigned for the union with dad, that's how far back that goes. So, you know, I understand the importance of the concept, but I guess for many of us, we're wondering when is the union going to be more militant? We saw a little bit of that, I think, during the anti globalization, especially. Mm -hmm. you know, and so, what is it going to take to get that kind of militancy back in? Well, I think uh, to stay on the track for a moment, uh, public education, what's going on, the union isn't there. Uh, you had uh, the Second largest strike in the country in the last three four years in Chicago. Five thousand Chicago teachers out for nearly two weeks in 2012, which is a product of the reform movement within the Chicago teachers. The caucus of dissidents uh, <coughs> taken over the role of ousting the incumbents who were much closer to the national union leadership, also conciliatory. Rahm Emanuel and Obama has uh, approached public education and the corporate-backed uh, education reformers and went through the um, restructuring the union, rebuilding it, reconnecting the members to the union, involving new people, and doing a lot of outreach to students and to parents and community organizations. They were able to wage a strike uh, that was I think, surprisingly effective and uh, pretty impressive amount of public support and uh, exposing the fact that the attack on the teachers and all unions is really bipartisan. It's not just Mitt Romney, who's the president then, pushes charter schools and privatization and stripping teachers John Rice and contracts. It's a big Democrat, friend of Obama, Rahm Emanuel, who's being a tough guy mayor, 
out to break uh, any union that you know, goes into the over and play dead, which the Chicago unions have done uh, since he took over. So uh, I think that's one example. We need more. And uh, I think in some of these other cities uh, where there's been similar upheavals recently, Massachusetts, uh, being a statewide example, but also in LA, Seattle, uh, Newark, uh, where some of these distant teacher caucuses have taken over the executive boards and like the top officers. Uh, there's definitely going to be more pushback than, than in the past, and let's hope it's not uh, too little too late. What, what role should unions be playing in the uh, fast food worker, Walmart strikes, the low wage worker strikes? Well, the main financial backer, which you probably know, fast food forward, is uh, the service of the race. Uh, some press accounts have kicked in as much as 10 to 15 million dollars to support this uh, worker protest movement. Um, and I think its main achievement so far, which is considerable, has been to help generate pressure around the country for minimum wage increases in the state. City level, or possibly even Congress at some point. Um, I think, given the nature of the workforce, I speak with a little bit dated experience as a McDonald's worker 45 years ago. It's a high turnover workforce. Who in this country hasn't worked for McDonald's at some point? Uh, and when you look at the high turnover, low wage nature of the job, um, the complicated kind of franchise structure of the ownership and management. I think it's going to be real challenging, even if the CEO sticks with it, to build an ongoing worker organization and something more than the vehicle for uh, protesting marches and rallies and you know, short duration okay. of strikes. It's important as it those have been, and certainly going global this month, getting uh, other unions around the world, other workers involved in ragged on the same global companies is, is a positive step. But when you look at what it's taken at Walmart to build the, our Walmart organization, many years, a lot of money, really intensive commitment to kind of sustaining a network of Walmart militants, activists, many of whom face serious management repression, suspended and fired. Um, you know, it takes staying power on behalf of the, the union financial backer and the service employees, whatever other strengths they may have, often suffered from a certain organizational attention deficit disorder. So uh, it's always a danger they may dart off in a new direction and leave fast food workers to fend for themselves. And, um, you know, if they can take ownership of the campaign, build citywide committees, uh, maybe set more of the agenda themselves, definitely a step forward for a different form of work or organization than a traditional union structure. Well, tell us a little bit about the work you do. And uh, I see, uh, is that an actual book? Yeah. Um, okay, it's let's uh, put just it out, out for our people to see. A couple of, oh, well, fellow believer in product placement. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, published by Monthly Review Press, 65 year old socialist publishing house, uh, represented here at the Left Forum and a long time co sponsor of it. Uh, it's a collection of, uh, of uh, previously published work about the challenges facing <coughs> unions, uh, organizing, bargaining, making strikes effective, developing uh, forms of independent political action that reduce labor dependence on the Democrats, and uh, also the challenge of building cross-border um, union alliances so that workers in different countries can confront common multinational employers more effectively. Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, you know, the struggles in Detroit in relation to, well, not the current ones, but that happened in the 60s, uh, recently with one of uh, personal friends that I know. Huh? But also a hero of black workers. General Baker, yes. yes. Very impressive. Very impressive gentleman. What do you what do you think about his passing and his legacy? Well, I only met him once and uh, well, in recent years in the Labor Love Gathering in Detroit and uh, it uh, it was clear that uh, you know, here was someone with deep roots in the community who had uh, found a way to transition from a period of intense Workplace community militancy in, in uh, the African American community in Detroit in the 60s and 70s to long term, effective, constructive work as an organizer, as a thinker, as a catalyst, as a mentor of younger people in, in the city. 
and uh, obviously the landscape political organizing there, radical organizing has changed a lot. He and his comrades went into the auto plants and challenged the, the big three and uh, the company union, the UAW, but I think not everybody was able to make that transition uh, once they got laid off or retired from work in the plants or got fired and blacklisted to other forms of community-based organizing, and Tony Wagner certainly was somebody who continued to be really important and positive influence in the community, and I think his, the tributes that have been pouring out to him from all over are well-deserved. Well, I'm, I guess kind of a, a, just a final question. Um, tell us a little bit more, obviously you have this book that just came out, about your work and what you do. Well, I was a full-time National Union representative for the communication workers for about 30 years. Uh, I've always done freelance writing, mainly about labor topics uh, on the side, and for the last five or six years since I retired from my full-time union work, I've become rank of file union member again as part of the CWA Newspaper Guild in the Bay Area. Um, put together with help publishers like Monthly Review three labor-related uh, books, and uh, now writing one about the history of labor and community struggle in Richmond, California, where I live. A lot of that story revolving around the struggle uh, uh, against. Uh, Standard Oil, Chevron, which operates a uh, major refinery in the city and, and uh, is still the city's largest employer. It's uh, going to be a story of uh, tensions within the Blue Green Alliance, but uh, a lot of promising developments on the political front in Richmond. And uh, I'm covering from the standpoint of a uh, participatory journalist and uh, resident of the community. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Enjoyed thank having you. you on here and as a to, strong union supporter. And were you, you from Massachusetts originally, or where was Well, I was born in Framingham ah. and lived in, uh, let's see, Wayland.